This short talk covers the way men in the British arts sector are being discriminated against. It covers some of the same material as my 2019 Messages for Men speech, but is expanded and has some new data. I am, uh, an Ale I am uh, Alexander Adams, uh, an artist and art critic and author of a number of books, including Iconoclasm, um, Identity Politics and the Erasure of History, published on the 6th of October. I've studied the provision of public funding for the arts in recent years, and this is what I discovered. Within the arts sector in the UK, there is a struggle for finite resources. In the public sector, exhibitions, prizes, commissions, exhibition spaces, uh, that's slots in the exhibition schedules, acquisition funds and jobs within organisations are limited. In the private sector, there is a uh, room for expansion through meeting public demand in a truly commercial sector without quotas or controls merit and demand determine allocation of resources it is in the public sector where groups seek favored status and protected allocation of publicly funded resources one effective one effective lobby is the women's art lobby this is not feminism per se but it overlaps as feminists cannot demand resources directly for feminists only, they must present their case as a support for women in the creative sector. This is the women's art lobby. The justification for the women's art lobby is that there is a historical imbalance um, against women. In the feminist narrative, women are always equal to men except when they are inherently superior. Therefore, the supposed dearth of women in the creative sector can only be due to their natural talent being suppressed, under-rewarded or excluded in favour of male counterparts. This is a reason to allocate resources specifically to women through specialist programmes and quotas, uh, these to be ring-fenced with no time limit. Naturally, this means the minimum allocation, uh, allocations of resources for women restrict the ability of men to access these same resources. And remember, this is a minimum. The women's art lobby uh, never states the goal is parity. Parity is the absolute minimum. It's not the end point. When politicians came under pressure regarding supposed discrimination against women in the workplace, the British government conducted a survey of arts organisations. The reporting of 2018 found that women comprise 56% of the workforce in the arts sector in the UK. The Arts Council of England has a national council comprising 53% of women and its uh, overall workforce is 65.7% uh, women. In the UK, 53% of directors of museums and non-commercial venues are women. The reports which contain this data were commissioned to reveal supposed, a supposed gender pay gap, which turned out to be uh, 2.6 unfavourable to women in medium, median income, mainly due to fewer women in top positions. Generally, women are more likely to work part time and tend to work fewer hours than men, resulting in lower incomes compared to men with the same job. While the pay gap, actually an aggregated earnings differential difference, was small, the number of women employed turned out to be higher than men, seemingly debunking the preoccupation, the preconception that women suffered discrimination and showing that women are not treated not only equally but favourably in the art sector in the UK. The breakdown of artist critic members of the Association, uh, Association Internationale de Critique de Art is roughly 50% male, 50% female. In the press relations sector of cultural event promotion, 66% are female. This evidence seems to contradict the narrative that British organisations reflect male power. At the very least, female administrators and human resources staff must be implementing a form of patriarchy which is proving strangely ineffective. Where is the evidence that men are being discriminated against? Let's look at the Premier Fine Art Prize in the UK, which is uh, the Turner Prize. Uh, it is an excellent barometer of the political disposition of the elite's views on gender in the arts. Of the last 10 contested Turner Prizes, winners have been six female winners, three male winners, one organisation. Um, in 
2019, the prize went jointly to two female and two male artists. The nominees in the last 11 years have been three organisations, 23 female artists, 18 male artists. In 2020, the prize was replaced by bursaries, which seemed to display, this, to display state arts outlook perfectly. Six women, two men, one organisation, one non-binary artist. The awards are now clearly run along the complicated, but never explicit, algebra of privilege. There is no longer any concession to individual merit. Artists are appointed to meet gen gender quota targets. Now, the recipients may have been the appropriate nominees and winners, but it is curious that the results in terms of gender fall so emphatically along the lines of state arts preferences. That is, I strongly suspect, because they were reverse engineered. The quota came first and the recipients were chosen to fit in. Let's add um, prize winners and bursary winners of the Turner Prize. Two organisations, 12 women, five men, one non-binary. We've been told that in many fields, women face sy systemic uh, disadvantage. It has become a standard belief of academics, teachers, curators and administrators, and it goes practically unchallenged. What has happened is that historically, women did face obstacles to becoming artists, but um, this has not been the case for 40 or more years. The women's art lobby uh, has used historical disadvantage, which was actual, to justify preferential treatment in an era of equal treatment. Um, let's have more data regarding the supposed prejudice that women face in the arts. Starting in uh, July 2018, for 12 months, I collected data on the press releases that I encountered as a critic in the form of emails, publisher catalogues, magazine advertisements and notices on specialist websites regarding the international art world. I neither screened nor sought out data. Every day I read or skimmed about 40 press releases. Uh, announcements related to uh, events in Europe, uh, North America, Australia and a few other regions, um, also of course Britain. Uh, I collected this data daily for 12 consecutive months. I was interested to test the narrative that women in the arts face obstacles that their male colleagues do not. In other words, women are subject to widespread sexism due to the actions of individuals, organisations and systems. Surely this would be reflected in the daily data. What were the results? Well, out of opportunities to exhibit, perform or publish, women received 45.5% of all opportunities. This conforms with estimates that women form 40 to 45% of, of practicing artists. In other words, women received exactly the amount of opportunities that we would expect. And what about appointments? Out of the appointments announced, 63% uh, of 63% were of women. So women were at a significantly were significantly favored over men in results. Of prizes and awards, 69% went to women and of course these are appointments and prizes which are at a high level so we can't claim that um, uh, that these um, appointments are at junior positions at sort of interns or you know sort of <clears throat> um, museum invigilators or whatever these are fairly high level positions and the prizes that are announced are of uh, major prizes with um, significant rewards and kudos far from facing prejudice women face complete fairness or favorable treatment this means that men face significant structural disadvantages in the public sector of the fine arts. So let's look at the summaries. One, women are appointed uh, to a greater number of permanent positions than men in public and private venues and arts organisations and to more temporary positions such as organisers, directors and curators of events. This strongly suggests that there is a bias against men in the hiring and promotion of individuals for permanent and temporary positions at the levels which prompt press announcements. If, as it seems, A, women are entering existing positions at a greater rate than men, and B, they are entering at a greater rate than that of the increase of positions in the field overall, then the field is becoming increasingly hostile to men, uh, dominated by women. Two, uh, female artists win more prizes than men. This seems clear. All other things being equal, a woman art, a female artist is two to three times more likely than a male artist to receive uh, an award or prize. Three, 
Women are not discriminated against in opportunities in arts events. Four, single gender events significantly favor female artists by providing more opportunities for female artists than for male artists. I looked at events that have been programmed uh, to promote art by artists who shared a single gender. I'm using here gender as synonymous with sex. That is, events that were deliberately organized on a selection criterion of participants having a common gender. I found four specifically male-only events. These were mainly awareness raising events, some connected to men's health. For female-only events, I found 83. The data above suggests that uh, women are not discriminated against in the contemporary fine arts. In some areas, notably appointments and prizes and awards, women are noticeably advantaged. The existence of bodies such as the Society of Women Artists and other organisations, prizes and events dedicated to women artists contrasts with the fact that there are no male only art societies which exclude women, uh, to my knowledge. I, I mean, that's not that uh, it's not part of their constitution. This disadvantaged narrative that women are systemically uh, discriminated against is a story that was founded on historical truth, but has not been true for uh, at least 40 years. Yet people, by no means all of them, women or feminists, repeat this narrative because it has not been because they have not considered the facts as they are today. Additionally, there is a fear that any concession to uh, the truth, that there is no longer systemic bias against women artists in the West, I'm not saying that there is no systemic bias against women uh, outside of the West, I think this probably does exist, uh, will cause a relapse a period of retrenchment when the forces of misogyny and tradition will erode the gains made by equal rights campaigners and pioneering female artists. That is why fem feminists will never give up their campaign for preferential treatment. Uh, if the foundational so story of inequality and oppression, the noble lie, is relinquished, there is no longer any need for feminism in the West. Looking at the figures stated in the 2018 report and the figures of this survey, it is clear that women are numerous, powerful, and um, uh, in high positions in the art world. It should be noted that many of the appointments of women in the survey data are to very senior positions, such as directors, board members, and senior curators. Women are increasingly dominating the administration of arts. All arts organizations have um, uh, gender mixed hierarchies and there is no opportunity for systemic bias against women, um, certainly in any of the organisations that I've encountered. Uh, I think that if such organisations did exist, they would have been highlighted by feminists and we'd know very much more about them, but I've never seen uh, any uh, evidence of this. There are potential causes of female artist advantage. These figures uh, show how show certain trends and we can draw tentative conclusions from what we see. These trends are the result of the arts becoming a field for overt political activism, attracting and rewarding individuals motivated by social and political concerns, especially in social projects, workshops, collectivist action and other collaborative activities. This is caused by arts organisations, venues, funding organisations, national government and local councils providing clear incentives for political action in the form of quota programming, statistical targets for demographic characteristics of staff, producers and consumers, uh, diversity programmes, community outreach, addressing minority social issues and other non-art issues, i.e. not artistic merit. Staff and venues need to meet these targets to retain income. Artists are rewarded with money, opportunity and status for fulfilling these uh, quotas. Achieving certain numerical targets with regard to female artists, administrators and visitors is a clear central part of these programmes and it's um, part of mission statements. Uh, you'll find this on the uh, Arts Council website. You, you go to um, local councils and they will say that um, inclusion, specifically inclusion of women, um, is uh, one of their priorities and so uh, you can see how this uh, filters down to the uh, behaviour of people in organisations, in commissioning organisations and venue management. Aside from the overt and covert institutional drive to increase the number of women in the arts, we must consider attitudes of individuals in the arts. Many of these are women. Almost all of them are university educated in the humanities, which are largely pro-feminist in, our, in uh, approach. 
Additionally, we have the narrative of female disempowerment and underrepresentation, which is promulgated by feminists and spread very widely. These new entrants into the arts fields have absorbed not only university teachings that women are disadvantaged, but also they have accepted the wider social narrative of feminism. Thus, when these individuals see a female a candidate applying for a job or an exhibition, their natural impulse is to do their bit for equality by favouring that woman over uh, a male competitor. They want to redress uh, perceived imbalance, both current and historical. These actions by competition juries, interview panels, funding committees and advisory groups are independent and oblivious of one another but their cumulative result is consistently dis, uh, advantaging women over men. So in an, er in an era when women have not only gained parity, but superiority over women, uh, superiority over men, sorry, I'll take that again. So in an era when women have not only gained parity, but superiority over men in some aspects of the art, arts, the disadvantaged narrative combined with ignorance about male to female ratios in the arts is hyper-privileging women. Looking at the statistics um, tells us absolutely nothing about the quality of the art. We cannot say that an exhibition by all women, all men, or a mixture is satisfying as an artistic event. Likewise, we cannot say that any man or woman in the abstract is worthy of a prize or stipend. We cannot say that roles of administrators or artists are better filled by women or men generally, only that certain jobs would be best given to certain candidates of either gender. Surveys like this one leave us no wiser about the quality or justice in the art world because justice would be success of skilled, ambitious and competent individuals. This survey measures demographic trends, not competence of individuals. I cannot speak of the justice of decisions made by committees, curators and councils, but I can say that it is noteworthy that in the fine arts, women traditionally view, viewed as disadvantaged and in need of support, fared disproportionately better than men in terms of prizes and appointments and no worse than men in the field of art opportunities. Remember that as political activists talk about statistics, they entirely neglect quality or competence. This correlates um, to the uh, political activist desire for social, i.e. group justice, instead of individual, i.e. personal justice. For the group to succeed as a collective, individuals of opposing group collectives must suffer, must suffer retraction of supposed advantages. Never mind that competent or brilliant people's individual lives are damaged in the process. This is, of course, exactly the point of first wave feminism feminists made. Competent women were being excluded from opportunities on the basis of sex discrimination. Now, third wave feminists demand that competent men are excluded from opportunities on the basis of sex discrimination. Modern feminism has become the sinister inverted shadow of its egalitarian origins. It seems that the common narrative that female artists are underrepresented in the contemporary art world is not backed up by study of statistics. The age of uh, gender equality in terms of opportunities in contemporary art has already been reached. Therefore, there is no just justification for preferential treatment for women artists, particularly in the forms of scholarships, awards, prizes, exhibitions and acquisitions specifically reserved only for female applicants. Private associations in the form of societies, clubs and so forth should be able to function and to discriminate on whatever basis they agree, including men's clubs excluding women and women's clubs excluding men. But they should not receive state support or sanction and they do not uh, deserve public encouragement. This is my position. In conclusion, I would say that my experience as an observer of the art world shows that among artists who are not primary carers for children, relatives or dependents, male artists starting their careers now face certain hurdles that female artists do not. Not only are women eligible for protected status advantages, there is a pervading sense that women deserve extra chances to compensate for historical disadvantages that haven't existed for decades. This is not to mention um, the fact that um, the people, the women who are actually disadvantaged 
um, died 100, 200, 300 years ago, you're not compensating those women because they're already gone. You're compensating the women now who have never faced um, uh, institutional disadvantage. So they're getting extra um, compensation on the basis of the actual injustice that um, their predecessors of um, preceding centuries faced. Um, in a system with a limited pool of resources, this imposes disadvantages on all male artists, regardless of their personal abilities. I think it also uh, applies to male applicants within the public arts sector, uh, especially at a high level. This seems manifestly unfair and should be opposed. Thank you.